thanks for joining me for this practice. And as always, a little reminder at the beginning to just do what feels right for you. Remember, your body will be different from day to day, and it's important that you try to find the balance between effort and ease. So doing enough in the practice to move the body and to keep the mind steady and focused on what you're doing, but gentle enough that you're not adding stress on any level. And as always, if you have questions, please um, just let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you once again for joining me and let's get started. So I thought we'd begin today just with some really simple um, stretches for the neck and shoulders, one of those places where we carry tension. So place your hands onto your mat or to the ground out by the side, so sitting in any comfortable position for you. And see if you can have a sense of the palms gently pressing down and the base of the skull and the collarbones lifting up. You might get a little tingle in the hands, which is just a sign that you're doing this little nerve tensioning exercise or nerve flossing exercise correctly. And from there, I just want you to start by raising and lowering your chin a few times. Now, of course, eyes closed whenever possible, just helping to direct the senses within. Remember to breathe smoothly both in and out through your nose. After your next out breath, bring the head back to a neutral position so the neck is in line with the rest of the spine. And then start to make little circles. So keep a sense of lifting up through the crown so there's still a sense of length in the neck. Just starting to move it around in circles. You're getting a stretch for the sides and the back of the neck. You just pause for a moment and then go back the other way. After one more breath, come back to the centre. Just rest there for a moment. Then raising your arms, reach them high, stretch up to the finger. And take your right hand down by your side and your left arm up and over past your head. And just see if you can stretch out the left side of the body, but keep space around the left ear so you're not shrugging the shoulder. Take one more breath here, lengthening all the way out to your fingers. And then gently sit back up, reach the arms up high and interlacing your fingers, press up through the palms as you breathe out. Take another smooth breath in, pulling the elbows gently back. And then lower your hands down and either just swap your legs by leaning back or if you'd like, you can pick up the hips and then pick up the feet, swap the legs in midair and then gently lower down once more. And once you've swapped the legs, again, reach your arms up high. And as you breathe out, take your left hand down and your right arm up and over past your head. Try to keep your right sit bone anchored down. Try to lengthen all the way through the side of the waist and ribs, right out into your hand. Take one more breath here. And after you breathe out, gently sit back up again, reach high to the hands, and then with the opposite thumb on top, again, interlace and press up through the palms. Take one more breath here. And then gently lower your hands down. And again, you might like to pick up the hips for a moment, maybe the feet as well. Then lower down, bring your feet roughly parallel and hip width, and press forward into a simple squat. So you might just like to have your arms reaching forward to help balance the body. If it's comfortable, you might like to just gently wriggle the body forward between the knees, and perhaps take the hands around and hold the heels from behind. And see if you can just drop the head towards the toes.
Take one more breath here. And after breathing out, maybe just half straighten or two thirds straighten the legs and let your body gently hang forward. So make sure that your lower back remains straight. And you might like to gently sway side to side, giving the body a little time to relax. Let the weight of the head traction the upper spine. Gently breathe out once more here. And after you exhale, bend your knees a little, press your hips forward and stand. Reach up to the fingers as you breathe in, stretching into the fingertips. Then overlapping your thumbs, fan the fingers and fold the body forward as you breathe out. Then circle up to your left. Reaching all the way out to the fingers in a nice smooth circle. And as you exhale, circle all the way down to the right. Just trying to keep the weight even on the feet. Then go back the other way. Circle up to the right as you inhale. Try not to race through the difficult bits. And then calmly exhale all the way down to the left. Once more standing up, reach the arms high, stretching up and maybe a little back. And again, fold the body forward, reaching out to the fingers, keep the lower back straight. And this time we'll start by circling up to the right. So we're lengthening and strengthening the left side body. And then exhale all the way down to the right. Nice steady breath and movement. And go back the other way, circle up to the left, tracing a big circle with the fingertips. And exhale all the way down to the right. And once more, stand up, raise the arms, raise the chin, stretch the throat. And bring your hands gently down. Just give your shoulders a little roll in both directions. And then step feet together at the front of your mat. Gently breathe out all the way here. And then with the backs of your hands together, reach up and stretch to the fingers as you breathe in. Fold the body forward, keeping the back straight, maybe bend the knees and breathe out. Lift the collarbones forward, arch the spine as you breathe in. Then step your left foot back into a kneeling lunge and breathe out. Bring the body up, reach to the hands as you breathe in. And keeping the arms raised, sink into the hips as you exhale. Take another smooth breath, maybe arching a little further take your hands to the mat and step back into downward facing dog. From down dog move forward into plank which might be on the knees and with control lower your body down onto the stomach and breathe out. And point the toes, reach back through the hands, lift the chest and either stay there or raise the feet as you breathe out. Either stay there or lift to up dog if you'd like. Last breath in. Knees, toes, hand, nose to the mat. Glide back into child's pose. From there, lift the hips high, keeping the knees bent. And then press the heels back into downward facing dog. Hold down dog for a breath or two. Just relax the shoulders and the back of the neck. On your next in-breath, reach the left leg high, stretching out to the toes, and step your left foot lightly forward between the hands and lower the right knee. Bring your body upright, reach to the hands, and sink a little deeper into the hips as you exhale. Once more, take another breath in, maybe taking the arms and shoulders further back, and then hands to the mat, step the right foot forward, and gently exhale. Stand all the way up, backs of hands together, stretch through to the fingertips. And then again, fold the body forward, bending the knees as much as you need. Lift the collarbones, arch the spine as you breathe in. And this time step your right foot back, again into a long kneeling lunge. Reach the arms high, stretch to the fingers as you breathe in. And bending elbows, take the hands behind the back as you sink to the hips. And raise the arms, 
stretching from the back knee all the way to the hands. And take your hands to the mat and step back into downward facing dog. From there, move forward into plank as you breathe in. Smoothly lower the body down to the stomach as you breathe out. Lift the chest and hands, point the toes, press back through the palms. And either stay there or raise the feet as you breathe out. Stay there or last breath in, lift to up dog, pulling the shoulders back, just hands and feet on the mat. And then knees, nose to the mat, glide back into child's pose. From child's pose, lift the hips, keep the knees bent, and then press the heels back into downward facing dog. And again, just hold there for a breath or two, try to relax the neck and the shoulders. On your next inhalation, reach the right leg high, stretching to the toes, and step the right foot forward into a long kneeling lunge. Bring the body up, lengthen to the fingers as you inhale, and bending elbows, take the hands behind the back and sink to the hips. Again, stretch out to the fingers. Remember, you can stay looking forward. Look up if it feels okay. And then hands to the mat, left foot forward, and gently exhale. Backs of hands together. Standing, reach the arms high. And keeping the arms raised, bend the knees and sink into Utkatasana. Take another calm breath in, pulling the elbows and shoulders back, press the knees forward, heels down. Fold the body forward into Uttanasana and gently exhale. From there, arch the spine, lifting the collarbones as you breathe in. Take hands to the mat and step back into downward facing dog. Move forward into plank as you breathe in. And this time lower to the stomach or to the push up and breathe out. On the stomach, lift chest and hands or take up dog if you'd like. And hold there or go a little deeper as you exhale. Take one more smooth breath in, lengthening the front of the body, activating the back, and then press back into down dog and calmly breathe out. Settle in down dog for a breath. And press the shoulders gently towards the toes. Then reach the right leg high, stretch out to the toes. And step your right foot behind the right hand, spin the left heel down. Stand up facing forward in warrior one. And keeping the arms raised, sink deeper into the hips. Try and press to the left outer heel. Take one more breath in, maybe looking up. And then hands to the mat, step back into downward facing dog. Rest there or move forward into plank. And smoothly lower the body down. Try not to collapse or raise. Your version of up dog, which might be on the stomach. And pull the shoulders back as you exhale. Take one more smooth breath into the chest. And then press back into down face dog and breathe out. Again, settle there for a breath. Relax the face, relax the jaw. Now reach your left leg high, stretch out to the toes. And stepping your left foot behind the left hand, spin the right heel down. Stand up as you breathe in, reach the arms high. And sink a little deeper into the hips, trying to roll the right hip forward. Take another smooth breath in as you stretch from the back foot to the fingers. And then hands to the mat, step back and breathe out in down face dog. Again, rest or move forward into plank. With control, lower down and breathe out. You're up dog as you breathe in. Keep the arms strong. And pull the shoulders back as you lengthen toes to throat. Take one more smooth breath in. And then press back into down dog. And calmly exhale. And then just settle into down dog for a little bit. Check that the weight is fairly even on your hands. The weight fairly even on the feet. Keep your 
head a little roll side to side, see if you can soften the back of the neck. And at the same time, lift the tailbone high, but press down through heels and hands. Take one more smooth breath here, perhaps allowing the shoulders to relax and move a little wider. Then raise your heels, look forwards and breathe in. Bring the feet to the hands and exhale. Again, bending your knees, come into Utkatasana, reach the arms high. And squeezing your knees together, sink the hips deeper as you breathe out. Now raise the heels, take another smooth breath in. And if you can, sink the hips deeper and breathe out. As you breathe in, straighten all the way up, trying to maintain balance to the best of your ability. And lower the heels, lower the hands to the heart. And if you're doing stomach work, we'll take 10 abdominal exhalations, so chest staying still. So lowering your hands, bring the backs of the hands together, then raise your arms, reach up and back as you breathe in. We'll take a little forward fold starting in half Uttanasana, Ardha Uttanasana. Just hands to the shins or maybe fingertips to the mat. Focus on keeping your lower back really straight here. Try to keep the belly relatively soft so you can engage Mula Bandha, the pelvic floor, but not hardening the stomach. And keep that sense like you did in Down Dog of the tailbone lifting away from the heels. Take one more breath here. And then either choose to stay where you are or let the body go a little bit further. And this time you might like to interlace your hands behind the back and add a shoulder stretch. It's okay to bring a little movement into the posture if that helps you to soften into it. Focus on relaxing the front of the shoulders if your hands are bound the backs of the legs and back of the torso. Take one more breath here. And gently exhale all the way. Release the hands if they're bound. Take the hands back to the shins, feet or mat as you lift the collarbones. Then taking your right hand underneath your shoulder Raise the left arm and left leg and open out into Ardha Chandrasana. It's a half moon balance. Doesn't matter if the right leg isn't quite straight, work towards it. And keep reaching out to left fingers and left toes. Try to stay on three fingers of the right hand to the weights on the leg. And take one more breath here. After breathing out, bring your left hand down and level your hips to the floor of the mat. Take another breath in here, press up through the back of the left thigh, and then reach your right arm high and come into the twisting half moon, Parivrita Ardha Chandrasana. Try to lengthen all the way from the back toes to the crown of the head. And take one more breath, maybe turning the shoulders a little bit further. And now as you breathe out, your right hand to the back of the calf and let the body fold forward over the right leg as you raise the left leg high. Keep the back knee straight. Take one more breath here and maybe fold a little further. Then release the right hand, bring the left foot to the right as you arch the spine. And then sink the hips down, raise the heels as you breathe out. Bring the hands to the heart, just balancing. Squeeze the knees and ankles together. A little rest for the hamstrings. And after exhaling, you can bring your fingers and heels to the mat. And with your left fingers underneath the shoulder, open out to the right side. So once more coming into Ardha Chandrasana. Try to keep the body in a straight line. 
one plane. Keep the front ribs gently pulled in. Remember the two sides aren't the same. One more breath. And after breathing out, bring the right hand down to level your hips to the mat. Reach to the back toes, press up through the right thigh. And as you breathe out, sweep the left arm to the side, turning the shoulders but not the hips. Keep the breath steady. And as you take your last breath here, see if you can turn the shoulders further, reaching to the left hand. And after you exhale, bring the left hand to the calf. You can either stay on fingers or right palm flat. Hold over the left leg and reach the right leg high. Think of pushing up through the back of the thigh as you reach to the toes. Take one more breath here. And then release the right foot to meet the left. Arch the spine and once more sink down onto the toes and bring the hands to the heart. One more breath here. And after breathing out, lower the heels, stand up, reach the arms high and if it feels okay, take the arms back. Lower the hands down, gently exhale. And then step your left foot back into Trikonasana triangle posture. So use the back of the right hand to help turn the body, making sure your torso is in the same plane as your feet. Reach out to the fingers and if the neck feels okay, look up. Take one more breath here. And after you exhale, if you can bring the left hand down behind your back, and hold the inner right thigh or just some clothing. Try to gently pull the left shoulder back. Take one more smooth breath here. And after you breathe out, gently release the left hand. Take it down next to your right foot and just shuffle your left foot a little out to the side. Then take your right hand to the back of the hips. Check that they're relatively level. And then see if you can reach the right arm up, coming into Parivrita Trikonasana. Remember, you can have the left hand on the shin here. Take one more breath. Try to press to the left heel and reach to the right hand. And sweep the right arm forward. If you can, take both arms forward and stand and reach to the fingers. And step the left foot forward and the hands in front of the heart. Steady there for a breath. Relax the shoulders and the jaw. And after breathing out, step your right foot back and come into Trikonasana on the second side. Remember to keep the legs strong and straight. Try to anchor into the back heel and the front toes. Keep space around the neck. Shoulders move towards the hips, not the ears. And as you turn your body to the side, pull the front ribs gently in. If you did on the first side, now bring the right hand to bind. Again, just holding some clothing is fine. Use the bind to deepen the stretch for the right shoulder. Take one more breath here. And after you breathe out, Turn to look down, release the hands down and just shuffle the right foot out a little to the right side. Take your left hand to the back of the hips, just see if they're fair, try to make, bring them fairly level and then sweep the left arm up if you can and come into the twisting triangle, Parivrita Trikonasana. Again, you should feel like the head is moving forward, the tailbone back and use the arms to turn the shoulders. Take one more breath here. And after you breathe out, bring the left arm down. See if you can take both arms forward, hands to chest maybe if you need. Stretch to the fingers and step the right foot forward and hands in front of the heart. And again, just close your eyes, settle for a breath or two. 
Lengthen your exhalation. Then bending your knees, come into Utkatasana, reach the arms up high. And fold your body forward into Uttanasana and breathe out. Lift the collarbones, arch the spine. And taking hands to the mat, step back into downward facing dog. Rest there or move forward into plank. And from there, lower the body down with control, maybe using the knees. Take your version of up dog, might be cobra or shalabhasana. And just because it's fun, knees, nose to the mat, glide back into child's pose. Lift the hips high as you breathe in. And press the heels down as you exhale. Everyone settle there for a breath, relaxing the neck and the jaw. Then reach your right leg high, stretch up to the toes. And step your right foot silently forward between the hands. Then cartwheel the arms up and come into warrior two, reaching equally to both hands. Keep the shoulders down and the body fairly centered over the hips. Take one more breath here. And after breathing out, bring your right elbow down, take your left arm forward and come into Pajvakanasana. So you're lengthening from the left outer heel into the left hand. Try to keep your left arm in the same plane as the shoulders. And if you're comfortable, maybe bring the right hand down to the inside of the foot and see if you can press the right knee a little further back. Take one more breath here. And after breathing out, bring the hands down, spin the back foot to face forward and gently lower down onto your left knee. Bring the body upright, maybe sliding the right foot in and reach up high to the hands. Then either bring hands to the right knee or bring the left heel to the buttock if that's accessible to you. Keep the shoulders pulled gently back. And take one more breath here, maybe squeezing the left knee forward. After breathing out, release the left foot. And with your left knee down, sit back onto the left heel. And then see if you can gently fold forward over the right leg. Take one more calm breath here. Remember not to force. After you breathe out, come back to the lunge. Shuffle your right foot a little bit out to the side and maybe slide the left foot back a little further. And just start with your hands down, under, more or less under the shoulders. Pull the shoulders back and the chest forward like a little arch for the spine. Take one more breath here, and then if you're comfortable, lower down onto the elbows. And keep reaching forward through the crown of the head, and sink the right sit bone gently down. Exhale just once more here. And after breathing out, come back to where you started with the hands more or less under the shoulders. Take a little arch, try and bring the left thigh down. Then press into your hands, raise the back knee, pick up the right foot and step back into downward facing dog once more. Settle there for a breath or two. Again, a little movement if that feels better for your body. On your next inhalation, reach the left leg high and then step the left foot silently forward between the hands. Spin the right heel down, cartwheel the arms up and come into warrior two on the second side. Try to sink down so that the front thigh is more or less parallel with the mat. And keep a soft gaze over the front middle finger. Take one more breath here. And then make your way into the first part of Pajvakanasana, 
Left elbow to the knee, right arm over the head. Keep your body in line with the feet and hips. Try to press the outer right heel down as you reach the right hand forward and up. And maybe if you did first side, now take the left hand down inside the foot and see if you can press the hips forward, but squeeze the left knee gently back. Keep space around the neck. Try not to hang the head. And just take one more breath here. After breathing out, bring the right hand down, spin the back foot to face forward. Lower onto your right knee and maybe slide the left foot in a little bit. Then bring the body back up, stretching to the hands. And simple option, hands to the left knee and just pull the ribs back. But if you can, bring the right heel to the buttock. Keep the shoulders moving back. And try to lengthen all the way from right knee to the throat. Just take one more breath here. And after you exhale, release the foot if you're holding it. Then maybe shuffle the left foot a little out to the side, turning out, and shuffle the right foot back. Bring the hands down under the shoulders, arch the spine a little bit. We're just starting to do like a one-legged up dog. And staying there is absolutely fine, but if you feel comfortable to do so, start to bring the body further forward and lower down onto the elbows and just let the hips relax here. Slow, relaxed breathing, not tensing the stomach. And just take one more breath here, perhaps letting the hips drop a little lower. Then bring the hands back to where they started, and again, arch the spine. Try and bring the right thigh forward. One more breath here. And after breathing out, sink back onto the right heel. There's a little stretch for the foot. And staying upright is fine, but if you're comfortable, start to bring the body forward over the left leg. Keep the shoulders and face relaxed. Take one more breath here. And after breathing out, Bring the body forward once more, pick up the front foot and step it back to down face dog. Stay there and rest or move forward into plank and smoothly lower the body down as you breathe out. Take your version of up dog, whatever that may be. Glide back through moving cobra into child's pose. With bent knees, lift the hips and then press the heels down as you breathe out. Take another breath, soften the neck, shoulders and face. Then raise your heels, look forwards and breathe in. And walk, step or float, feet to the hands. Then stand your body up, reach the arms high, stretch to the fingertips. Lower the hands gently down as you breathe out. And stepping your left foot back, turn your feet out 45 degrees and sink down into your hips. Take the hands to the inner knees and just press the knees back. Drop the shoulders and sink down deeper through the sit bones. Just holding here for another breath or two. After your next out breath, take your fingertips to the mat or floor underneath your shoulders and just gently sway your hips side to side. So you're not trying to get the body all the way down or the legs straight. You're just bringing a little movement into that inner hip stretch. Try to keep a sense of gently pressing your sit bones forwards. 
Then come back to the center, spin your heels wide. And just check that the outer edges of the feet are roughly parallel. Pause here for a moment with the spine straight and flat. And keeping the legs strong, the kneecaps pulled up. Either stay there or walk your hands forward like you're doing a wide-legged down dog. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Try to lengthen all the way from the tailbone, out through the crown of the head and then into the fingers. Gently exhale once more here. And after breathing out, bring the hands back in under the shoulders, lift the collarbones, arching the spine. Bring the chin into the throat, pull the front ribs up and exhale. Then come back to a neutral position. Take your right hand to the mat underneath your face. Take your left hand to the back of the hip and twist and look up over the left shoulder. So the spine's quite straight. Try not to side bend. Use your left hand pressing down to deepen the twist for the lower back. So it looks fancier with the arm raised, much more effective with the hand on the hip. After your next out breath, swap the hands, the left hand directly under the face, right hand to the back of the hip. Twist and look up over the right shoulder. Use the right hand to keep the hips level and just to check that your spine is still straight. Again, right hand up looks fancy, but doesn't do as much as hand down. After your next out breath, gently release. Bring the right hand back down, lift the collarbones like a cat-cow stretch. Bring the chin in, round the back and breathe out. Try and press up between the shoulders. Then turn your feet out and just start to slide them away from each other. Try to keep the soles of the feet down. You might prefer to stay up on the hands, just taking a little side split, just to your comfortable capacity. If you'd like, you can lower onto the elbows. And we're just gonna rest here for a couple of breaths. Gently exhale once more. And start to heel and toe the feet back in together. Once you're comfortable, bring the hands back under the shoulders, lift the collarbones, bring the chin to the throat and breathe out. Then gripping your fingers down, lean into the hands, lift to the tiptoes. Hold there for one or two breaths. And then float your feet together. And sink down into a squat once more. This time, if you can have your feet together, of course, heels apart if you need, maybe rolling the back of your mat if you're tightening the ankles. Bring the body forward, and either hands in front of the heart or forward, but ideally wrap the arms around behind you. Take hold of the heels, or if you're comfortable, stretch the arms further back. Try to bring your face towards the toes and your tailbone towards the heel. If you're comfortable there, maybe try taking the hands up behind the back, full position of Malasana, the hands bound around the sacrum, although it's quite a difficult one. Take a last breath or two here. And after breathing out, Release the hands, bring the knees together and half or fully straighten the legs back into Uttanasana. Maybe just palms up on the mat. Give the knees a little walk out maybe. And after your next exhalation, see if you can arch the spine and stand. Using the back muscles, reach up high to the hands. And lower your arms gently down. And stepping back to the front of your mat now, start with your right foot facing forward. Step your left foot back as you, as you did for Parivrita Trikonasana. 
Then taking the right arm over the left, bring your arms into the Garudasana position. Try to keep the thumbs pointing straight up as the fingers and elbows move away from the body. And then with an arch in your spine, start to bring your body forward. Make sure you're not rounding the back. We want to try and keep the spinal muscles active here. Try and reach forward through the crown and the fingertips and anchor down through the feet. Take one more breath here. And after breathing out, see if you can lean forward and raise the left leg into Virabhadrasana 3, but with the arms in Garudasana. Take one more breath as you stretch out to the left toes. And gently bring the left foot back down to where it started. Unravel the arms, reach them high. And holding your left wrist, take the hands over to the right. Try to lengthen all the way from inner left ankle to the left palm. As you take your last breath here, see if you can fold a little further to the right. And reach the arms high, look up if it feels okay. Stretch up to the fingers and step the left foot forward and hands in front of the heart. And taking the second side now. So step your right foot back, a little out to the side, leg, leg distance apart, and take your left arm over your right. Reach the elbows and hands forward, and then with an arch in your spine, bring the body forward till you just start to feel the left hamstring stretch. Keep pressing down through the sole of the left foot and keep the knees straight but unlocked. Make sure there's still weight in the back heel. Take one more breath here. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. And you can stay there if you'd like, but otherwise lean forward and see if you can take warrior three with the arms in Garadasana. Take one more breath, stretch out to fingers and back toes. And then step the right foot back to where it started, unraveling your arms, reach them high. Then take hold of the right wrist and take your hands over to the left. Try to pull the elbows back and roll the right hip forward. You should feel a little stretch in the right side of the stomach in front of the hip. Take one more breath. See if you can pull the front ribs back and press to the right part. Then reach the arms high. Maybe looking up, stretch to the fingers. And step right foot forward and hands in front of the heart. Settle there for a breath or two, eyes closed. And then gently opening your eyes, stand on your right foot and coming to Vrikshasana tree posture. So you can be on the left toe tip, you can bring the foot to the calf. Ideally bring the left foot to the inner right thigh. There's a half lotus variation for those who know it. Start with the hands in front of the heart. Lift the collarbones up and pull the left knee back. Either choose to stay there or now reach down with the left hand, take the big toe lock. Reach your left leg out to the side as the right arm reaches out to the side. Try to keep the hips level so you're dropping your left sit bone down. Take one more smooth breath here. And then come back into Vrikshasana left foot to inner right thigh. Stretch up into your fingers, take a breath in. Reach all the way from the right foot to the hand. And then lower the hands down. And we'll repeat on the second side. So gripping your left toes down for stability, start by bringing your right foot to toe tip, calf or inner thigh. Bring the hands to the heart and just steady yourself in that position. Keep lifting up through the collarbones wherever you are. And either stay there or now take the right hand down and again, take the big toe lock 
The left arm counterbalances the weight of the leg. Try to pull the knee and the foot back, but without lifting the hip. And keep your shoulders down. Take one more breath here. Keep a steady gaze. And then release the right foot back to where it started. Reach the arms high, stretch to the fingertips. And lower the hands and the right foot. And gently breathe out. Stepping back to the front of your mat. Bring the backs of the hands together and reach the arms high. And fold your body forward into Uttanasana and breathe out. Lift the collarbones, pull the shoulders back as you breathe in. And taking hands to the mat, step back into downward facing dog. Rest or move forward into plank. If you're not resting smoothly, lower down. Remember to move with the breath. Take your up dog as you breathe in. And hands, knees, nose to the mat, glide back. The tricky bit's keeping the nose touching the mat the whole way. With bent knees, lift the hips as you inhale. And press back to down face dog and gently exhale. Take one more breath here. Then rolling onto the right hand and right foot, reach the left arm high in Vashastasana. And as you breathe out, thread your left arm under the right with your fingernails grazing the mat. Then again, reach the left arm high, stretch up to the fingers as you breathe in. And bring the left arm under the right. Again, reaching out through the fingertips. And again, take the left arm high into Vashastasana. Keep the elbows unlocked. Thread the left arm through. You should feel the right side of the waist. Reach the arm high. Take a breath in. And come back into downward facing dog. Again, settle for a breath or two. Press down through the heels and hands. And now repeating that on the second side. Grip the left fingers down. Roll to outer edge of the left foot. Reach the right arm high as you breathe in. And as you exhale, bring the right fingers underneath the left arm as far as you can. Then again, reach the arm high, stretch up to the fingers. And thread the right arm underneath the left, activating the left side of the waist. And once more, reach the right arm high, stretch up to the fingers. Last time, arm goes through. Fingernails grazing the mat. Play a little tune. And then take the arm high as you breathe in. And back into downward facing dog. Again, rest or move forward into plank. If you're not resting, lower down. Your up dog breathing in. And knees, nose to the mat, glide back. With bent knees, lift the hips and lower onto the heels. Settle for a breath. And then see if you can simultaneously lower onto your elbows. Keeping the forearms parallel, stay there or walk the feet in and maybe raise one or both legs. Some days the balance is easier than others. Swap legs if you're doing one at a time. Wherever you are, take one more breath. And then gently lower down and sink into child's pose with the hands back next to the hips. Take a couple of slow, relaxed breaths there.
And after breathing out once more, gently bring the body back up. Raise the arms, stretch to the fingers, interlacing your fingers, press up through the palms. Pull the shoulders back, raise the face to look up past the fingers if you can. And then gently bring the hands down and roll over the feet or pick up the legs. And stretch your legs out in front. So moving into seated postures now, more of an opportunity to keep the eyes closed without the need for balance. Start by taking your right leg out to the side, keep the left leg active, toes and knee pointing up, reach the arms up high and we'll start with a twist to the left in Ardha Matsyandrasana 2. So wrap the left arm around to hold right thigh if you can, right hand maybe to the outer left heel. For a simpler option, just right hand outside left knee and left hand just behind the left hip. As you twist, try to keep the spine upright and straight and keep the left ear slightly raised. Slow the breath down. And just exhale once more here, deepening the twist as you breathe out. Unravel your spine. Reach the arms up high. And start to bring your body forward into Janu Shirsasana. So maybe just hands around the calf to begin with only going to the foot or the ankle if you can keep the lower spine straight. You might like to just rock the hips side to side, that might help to free up the hamstrings and glutes a little. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Take one more breath here. After breathing out, sit back up, reach the arms high once more. Lowering your arms down, pick up the right foot and take it to the outer left knee. Then bend your left knee and come into Ardha Matsyandrasana 1. Now you can keep the left leg straight if you're tight in the hips. So make sure both sit bones are down. Start to turn now to your right. Simplest option, left arm around the front of the knee. If you're comfortable, bring the arm up and over the knee. Keeping the right sit bone down, maybe lock the left hand down onto the left foot. And either choose to stay there, or if it's really comfortable for you, try threading the left arm underneath the right thigh and hold right wrist with left hand. Just the last couple of relaxed abdominal breaths here. After breathing out once more, turn the head to the left and unravel the arms. Stretch the legs out in front. And taking your hands back behind you. Remember you can do this on the fists if your wrists are a bit sore. Pull the shoulders back, lift the collarbones up. That might be enough. Otherwise, bent legs if necessary, straight legs if you can. Lift the hips high into Pavottanasana. Keep the elbows unlocked and the shoulders moving towards the hips. And if it feels okay, you can raise the face to the sky. Otherwise, looking forward. Take one more breath. And then gently lower your body down. And keeping your right leg stretched out, now bend your left leg out to the side. Remember if you've got really sensitive knees, you can place your foot uh, around the inner right knee. That's a good option as well. Reach the arms up high, lengthen into the fingers. And starting with a twist to the right, Ardha Matsyandrasana 2. Remember we're trying to revolve the spine around its axis, not side bend or back arch. 
of course take the deeper variation if you did on the first side. And particularly in that variation, it should feel not like you're doing a forward bend, but like you're trying to sit back up, but the left hand holding the foot is keeping you in a slight forward position. Keep gently pulling the right shoulder back to deepen the twist. At the same time, press forward through the right heel. Take one more breath here. Maybe turning further as you breathe out. Then turn your head, unravel the body, reach the arms high, again activating the back and the shoulders. And then fold the body forward, just starting perhaps with hands outside the right calf. Only if you're very comfortable, hands come to the ankle or heel. Rock side to side, freeing up the sit bones. Try to have a sense here of the crown of the head and collarbones moving forward, not just the face moving down. Keep space around the neck, shoulders relaxed, and relaxed abdominal breathing. Take one more breath here. And after your calm out breath, again sit back up, reach up to the fingers as you breathe in. And bring your arms down, breathe out, and bring the left foot to the outer right knee. So we're twisting to the left this time. And again, right leg can stay straight. Good option if you're tightening the hips. Otherwise, bring the right leg to bend, making sure you're not sitting on the right foot. Keep the left sit bone down and either stay there or maybe take your arm up and over and bring the right hand to the right ankle to lock yourself into position. First part of a bind here. Use the left hand to keep the spine upright and straight. And if you did on the first side, now maybe thread the right arm under the left thigh and see if you can hold left wrist with the right hand. Relaxed abdominal breathing. Just one more calm breath here. And after you breathe out, unravel. Head first, then the spine and arms, then stretch the legs out in front. Again, give your knees a little shake. And taking your hands back, stay there, just lifting the collarbones to stretch the shoulders if necessary. But ideally with straight legs or maybe bent legs, lift the hips high. Keep the elbows unlocked, move the shoulders towards the hips and knees. Look up only if it feels okay for the neck. Try to close your eyes and focus on lifting the hips and the collarbones. Take one more breath here. And then gently lower the hips down. Bending your legs, bring your knees in towards the chest, wrap your arms around the shins, remembering to try and alternate which way you do this. So sometimes we tend to just get into this habit of left arm over right or vice versa. And gently rock back and find your balance point. Take one more breath. And after breathing out, gently open your eyes and take hold of your feet and see if you can bring them up towards the chest. Do we want the feet as high as the knees? And either choose to stay there or take the big toe lock once more and see if you can open the feet out wide to the sides, which is a little tricky for the balance. Keep the collarbones lifted, the shoulders down. Take one more smooth breath here. 
And after breathing out, bring the feet back together. And come into Tarasana if you have sensitive knees with the feet forward half a metre. If you're comfortable, bring the heels towards the hips. Lift the hips and tilt the tailbone back. And everyone starting with the hands behind you, either in Tarasana or Baddha Konasana, give the knees a little bit of a butterfly. Then stay with the hands behind you if your lower back's tight. Otherwise, take hold of the feet, either toes together or separated, whatever feels better for your legs. Bring the chin down to the throat, lift the base of the skull, creating Jalanda Abunda. And try to pull the rib cage forward between the upper arms. Gently breathe out all the way. Keep the chin to the throat. Slowly, deeply breathing in, filling from the navel right up to the collarbones. Hold the breath, pull the chest forward, shoulders back. Now gently breathe out all the way. And again, breathe deeply in, filling from the navel to the throat. Hold the breath, shoulders down and back. Collarbones forward and up. And breathe out all the way. Stomach to spine. One more time. Slowly breathing in. Shoulders back. Holding a little longer. Exhale all the way and take Uddiyana Bandha if you know it. Releasing the locks, breathing. And bring the chin into the throat and breathe out. And pick up the knees, bring them together. Wrap your arms around the shins. Squeeze the knees outwards for a moment. Then squeeze the knees inwards. Then gently lean back. Find your balance point once more. Take one more breath. And then open your eyes just for fun. Bring the feet a little wider than the hips. Press the body forward. Then lifting your hips a little bit, see if you can wriggle the shoulders to the inner knees. Give yourself a breath or two there. Then take your hands down behind the heels. So we're working into Bhujya Pidasana and Titivasana, the firefly. Lean back. See if you can pick up the feet. If you're comfortable, interlace them, locking yourself into Bhujya Pidasana. Maybe swap the feet the other way. And either stay there or if you would like to, unhook the feet and see if you can straighten the legs out or close to straight in the firefly posture, Titibhasana. And then lower all the way down. And again, just wrap your arms around the shins. This time feet on the mat, lift the collarbones, pull the shoulders down. Take one more breath. And gently come to lying down on your back. So lying down on your back, maybe just take the feet out to the edges of your mat, let the knees drop together and rest your hands on the belly for a few breaths. Make sure you're breathing down to the lower belly and lower back. And bring your feet hip width apart. Keep the feet parallel. 
toes pressing down, reach your arms over past your head. As you're breathing, lift the hips up. As you breathe out, lower the hips gently down. Again, as you breathe in, lift the hips, going a little higher each time. And as you exhale, gently lower down. Once more, lift the hips high. And lower gently down. And this time, lift the hips and either stay there or if you're comfortable to do so, bring your hands down and interlace the hands behind the back. See if you can bring the shoulder blades a little closer together. Keep the chin to the throat and try and soften and lengthen the back of the neck. Keep the knees gently squeezing in. Take one more smooth breath here. And after you breathe out, release the hands. Lower your spine gently back down to the mat. And again, rest with the hands on the belly, either keeping the body still or gently rocking the knees side to side if you'd like. Again, remember, eyes closed whenever you can. Inner focus. Now again, lift the hips. Either stay arms overhead or hands by the sides, or again, interlace and come into second bridge, but this time opposite thumb on top. Try to have the arch moving into the middle and upper back, not just in the lower spine. Remember not to harden the stomach. We can engage more of under the pelvic floor without tensing the abdominal muscles. Keep the back of the neck long, stretching shoulders and back of the neck. Great posture for surfers, by the way. Take one more breath. And mountain bikers too. And gently release the hands, lower the hips, all the way down. And again, just have a little rest. Soften your breath. And now either choose to repeat first or second bridge, or if you'd like, lift the hips up. And once you've got a little space, bring the heels of the hands under the sacrum and make your way into third bridge. Trying to find some length in the front of the hips. If you're very comfortable there, bring the feet together. Then bring the right knee into the chest and straighten your right leg to the sky. And gently lower the right leg down and swap to the other side. Left knee to chest and then leg to the sky. Lower the left leg down. Again, bring the feet hip width apart. Release the hands and lower your spine to the mat. And again, have a little rest. Give the wrists a stretch if you've been in that third bridge variation. And then you've got the option to stay and rest or repeat first, second or third bridge. Those who'd like lifting into Udva Dhanurasana, just one back arch. Bring the hands either side of the ears, press into the toes, lift the hips, and then press into the hands and lift the body. I like to lift onto the toes first at least, and then lower the feet, and you're looking for a stretch in the stomach here. Keep breathing smoothly. Last couple of breaths. A 
After your next exhalation, just gently lower the body down. And again, give the wrists a stretch. And stretch your right leg out along your mat. And hug the left knee gently into the chest. If you're comfortable to do so, keep the right leg down, but lift the chest and shoulders coming into a half sit up. And then maybe release the hands and stretch them forward. Try not to let the body drop down. Take one more breath here. And after breathing out, take the head and shoulders back down, stretch the left leg out and hug the right knee gently into the body. So remember, particularly if you're not doing stomach work for any reason, staying here is fine. Otherwise, chin to throat, lift the head and shoulders off the mat, a little half sit up. And either stay there or keep the body as it is, but release the arms forward. And just take one more breath here, maybe sitting up a little higher. And then lower the body to the mat. Stretch your right leg out. And just give the hips a little shuffle side to side. Now keeping your right leg on the mat, once more bring the left knee in towards the body. And either stay there or holding the left ankle or outer foot. Straighten the left leg. And start to gently bring it down towards the body once it's straight. Take one more breath here and either stay where you are or now bend your left knee and see if you can bring your left knee towards the floor next to the left ribs. The left shin should stay vertical here. A different stretch for inner and back of the left leg. Keep the right leg, right calf on the mat. Right hand helps a little bit pressing on the thigh. Take one more breath here. And if the leg is bent, straighten it once more. And stretch it out along the mat and swap to the second side. So bring the right knee into the chest and either stay there or taking hold of the calf or ankle or foot, straighten the right leg. Try not to get dirt from your feet into your eyes <laughs> and either stay there or once more bend the right knee and with the right shin vertical left calf pressing down see if you can bring the right knee towards the floor next to the right ribs again one side of this one will be much easier than the other as a general rule Wherever you are, just take one more breath. If the right leg is bent, straighten it again. And then release the right leg along the mat. And again, give the hips a little shuffle side to side. And stretch your arms over your head. Lengthen out into fingers and toes. And bring your arms down by your sides, coming into your Shavasana position. Of course, if you'd prefer to sit for Shavasana, that's fine as well. So particularly if you're moving off into the day after this practice. Settle the body into whatever position you've chosen, making any little adjustments. And then resist the temptation to move. Just keep the body still. With closed eyes, take an inner focus in Ajna Chakra, the eyebrow center. Keep the tongue very gently pressing to the roof of the mouth. Tune into the sound 
and the sensations of the breath. Cultivating a single pointed inner focus. Remember the whole practice has been a moving pranayama. Now a few minutes of still steady pranayama. Breathe out all the way. And with an eight second rhythm, breathe slowly in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and smoothly out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Deeply in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and smoothly out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in and count to yourself now. Adjust the length of the rhythm as appropriate for you. Shorter rhythm if your breath starts to feel uncomfortable in any way. A longer rhythm if you know you have a deeper breath cycle. Maintain a balance of inhalation and exhalation. Maintain a steady, even quality to the breath from the beginning through the middle to the very end. Using the sound of the breath just to cultivate that even intensity. Remember the mind will want to wander, thoughts vying for your attention. But to the best of your ability, maintain your focus just on the breath, allowing all other thoughts to simply remain in the background. And when you notice you've become distracted, it's important not to get frustrated in any way. Equally important not to just get carried away with the story of the mind, but to simply recognize what it was that distracted you and then keep coming back to the breath. And just maintain that inner focus, your steady breath rhythm to the best of your ability for the last minute or two. Simple Ujjayi Pranayama.
stop rushing, finish the cycle you're on. Once you've completed the exhalation, just allow your breath to settle into its own rhythm. Maintain awareness of your breath, but relinquish control. So you're observing without involvement. As the breath softens, let the body soften. Let the mind become clearer, calmer. Recognising perhaps little moments of silence between thoughts, between breaths. body, breath and mind dissolve into that space. Resting in simple awareness. Sarva Mangala Mangalye Shive Sarvata Sharike Sharanye Triambake Gauri
Narayani Namo Stute Om So remain as you are as long as feels appropriate. When you do decide to move, just starting by deepening the breath, coming back to inner movement, and slowly reawakening the body to outward movement, starting with fingers and toes, wrists and ankles. And when you're ready, take your arms over your head, stretching out through the whole body. Make your way back in your own time to a comfortable seat. Take a few breaths there, just to be aware of how you are after the practice in body, mind and heart. See if you can maintain a sense of inner stillness, of simple awareness as you move through the activities of the day. And thank you very much for joining me and allowing me to share the practice with you. I'll see you again soon. Namaste.